Okay. Now we're learning a mimer, a Hasidic discourse from the first Rebbe of Chabad, written in the book, <coughs> which is called the Kuti Torah. And we discussed the 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 what happened exactly spiritually when which spiritual aspects of God were revealed in the world when God split the sea. When the Jews left Egypt, they split the sea. Right, the splitting of the sea, that, that was pretty impressive. You know, that's like the sort of ultimate miracle, uh, the most famous, in any case, miracle of, uh, of miracles, that God split the, the whole ocean. Pretty impressive also. You know, make, make a, a good movie scene out of it. That millions of Jews left Egypt at one time. It says that there was like three million Jews left, and they were they they came up to the sea, and the sea split. And in according to the uh, Judaism, it split into th twelve different channels, and for one for each of the tribes, and the tribes walked through the channels, and uh, they got to freedom. They went to freedom. like we said before. Really, they just went in the sea, and they sort of made a U turn. They went down a couple of miles and came out on the same side. And, and uh, the, the sea then drowned the Egyptians. The purpose of this whole business was not to drown the Egyptians or to get the Jews to the other side. It was to give the Jews an experience of what the spiritual worlds are. In other words, to give them a little bit of a personal, uh, what do you call it, intimate, factual, real uh, feeling of the creator. Great. So God's sort of like introducing himself to everybody so that everybody feels the creator. So what happened at Yam Suf? It says that all of the spiritual world split and the Jews were able to see godliness, see godliness. And that's pretty good. You know, you see that you're being created and you see how good the creator is and how powerful the creator is, how the creator cares about you and he's infinitely close to you and is infinitely distant, is infinitely powerful, is infinitely loving. Right, that everybody felt. <clears throat> and the Rebbe said, that's nothing compared to what it's going to be in the, the, the Mashiach. Mashiach, he's going to split, not the, he's not going to split the river, the sea, Yam, Yam Suf. He's not going to split the, the sea, the, the, the sea, the Red Sea. But he's going to split the river. Huh? That's really going to be something. And he's not going to split it into 12. He's going to split it into seven. Uh, so the Rebbe says, what's so big about that? What's so big? What's so we think about this just now? This is so big. What, what's so great about that? I mean, that's what we're waiting for Mashiach to come. That he's not going to split the sea. Oh, no. He's going to split the river. <clears throat> and he's not going to split it into 12. <laughs> 12, that's it. He's going to split it into seven. So the Rebbe said, what's the point? What's the whole point? That's what we're waiting for Mashiach to split some river. Which, which river are we talking about? Which river are we talking about? The sea we knew. What river? Maybe from the river to the sea. Huh? Maybe that's what they're talking about. From the river to the sea. Oh, here we go. The sea is the Yam Suf, the God split. And from the river, that's talking about, we'll see what that means. We'll see what this river is. Okay. So... <clears throat> True, when, when God split the sea, the Jews were free. There's no doubt about it. They were free from Egypt. But the Rebbe says that's nothing. You have no idea how far away they were from freedom. In relation to Egypt, they, of course, they were free. But the, what real freedom is, we're going to see, is going to be what the Mashiach is going to produce. Okay, so let's just talk about this, the sea first. What the, the, the sea split, right? The Red Sea split. Yamsu, the Sea of Reeds split. What happened? So the Rebbe said like this. <clears throat> As we explained last time, this world is the tip of an inverted iceberg of reality. Reality. The upper worlds are much more real than this world is. What does it mean much more real? That they feel the creator. The upper worlds feel the creator. Huh? They feel the creator. This world, they don't feel the creator. You don't feel the creator. I mean, to the degree in this world, we don't feel the creator that they have these big, major religions that believe that, you know, you have to believe in a person or something like that in order to get saved or whatever you have to believe. 
that God is so far away, you know, he is so far away that he has to have an emissary in, in the middle. And you can only go through by believing this emissary. Well, the fact is, God, it really is far away. And he has to have an emissary, but he has to have an emissary to make us reveal, feel how close he is, not how far he is. How that God is personally creating each and every one of us. So when the Jews left Egypt, they felt this. When the sea split, so all this concealment that's concealing how close God is, it, it went away. So the Rebbe says, not really all the concealment. Let's not exaggerate. A little bit of this concealment was removed. The sea splits. So what is the sea? The sea is the division between the world of Atsilut and the world of Bria. Huh? You know where that is? Atsilut and Bria. <clears throat> So Atzilut and Bria, these are two dimensions of reality. It says the world of Bria, that's the world of the souls. I guess there's some angels there also in the world of Bria. You see the souls, you see the, the, the angels, no. <clears throat> that's the world of Bria. The angels up there in Bria, they're going berserk because they know and they feel they're being created and they have no conception of what God is. But they feel it clearly, not like us. We don't feel anything. So it says, when the sea split, as God opened up the door between Atsilut, which is pure godliness, and Bria, which is the highest of the spiritual world, let's say. Spiritual world. He opened it up, which means that God became closer to us, and that everybody and all the Jewish people felt this, and consequently, they all felt more God. They felt God. They got a glimpse of God, but they still got a glimpse of God instead of Getting a feeling of God through three veils, spiritual Asiya and then Yetzirah and Bria. And then you get a, by, by that time, you don't get any glimpse of God at all. That's where we're at. So the, 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 the world of, of, uh, of the difference between Bria and, Atsi, and Atsilus was divided. So now there's only two. There's only the world of Yetzirah separating us. Because God is revealed in Bria. So only Yetzira is separating us. So instead of God being only revealed in the world of Atsilut, and the worlds below it, Bria and Yetzira are separating, now Bria is not separating anymore. Because God is revealed in Bria, so therefore we have this world, and Yetzira is separating us. And, and that's what it means, he split the sea, he split Malchut of Atsilut. So that Atsilut, the highest true dimension, of the revelation of God could be revealed in the level below it, totally. It's zero. And therefore, it was closer to us, so we could feel it. Huh? Why 12? Because of the, of the 12 tribes. And the number 12 is especially, the Rebbe pointed out last time, is especially connected to this world of Bria. The number 12, the 12, remember, Gvuli Alaksan, the 12 boundaries or whatever. <clears throat> and these different revelations of God that's mainly in the world of Bria and Malchut, the state of Malchut. So in other words, it's pure godliness, which we don't have any idea what it is, but it's the lowest level of pure godliness. And it was revealed at a very, very high level. It was revealed very high. So it's, let's say, let, let's take an example just to bring it a little bit home. Let's say that, you know, Albert Einstein comes up with a new theory of relativity and this is going to change the whole world. Who's changing the world? Well, the professors, the big professors, this knocks them out. So Albert Einstein, let's say he's like the world of its, um, this is like, this is a very poor metaphor that I'm using over here. But let's say, because he, this is talking about Albert Einstein, these people are just in the world. We're talking about God. But just to bring it a little bit home. So Albert Einstein, in his mind, he's got these tremendous ideas that nobody understands. And then one day, all of a sudden, he gets, he reveals all of his ideas to the biggest professors. So now they understand. So that makes it a little bit closer to us. That's what happened on Kriyas Yamsu. God revealed his essence to the world right below it. So even though the Jewish people, they only got a little sort of array of this, but it still is closer to them. It still is closer. And of course, we know it wasn't permanent, but it was temporary. But okay. So that's what happened. And that's the 12 tribes. That's what we explained. Okay, now... We're going to see, one second, what's going on over here. 
One minute, one minute. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Why isn't this working? That's the 12 tribes. That's the four. That's the idea of four. Okay, that's already. Therefore, therefore, the sea was split into 12 uh, channels that each tribe and each tribe was in its channel. So that the godliness could be digested, the little bit of godliness that was revealed at, at Mount Sinai, at, at, at uh, the, the splitting of the sea, it could be digested, each person according to his own ability. Okay, so according to this now, we can understand a little bit what happened when God split the sea. This was the Kriyat breaking open of <clears throat> Dibur, God's speech. Right, God's created the world from speech, and we don't feel that anybody is speaking. God is creating right now the world from speech. You are being created by God's word. I am being created. Everything is being created by God's word, and we don't feel it. Well, in when the sea split, everybody did feel it. Did feel it. Right. But what they felt, you'll see, was nothing compared to what's going to be in the Mashiach. The Haino, namely, Shalom Yalim, that would not. The letters of God's speech would not conceal. Umlam Batlas, you love in the future. It says, if you are in Isaiah, it says God will lift his hand over the river. What's the river? In a Krias Yamsu, the splitting of the sea had to be in order that there could be afterwards receiving the Torah. Now, here we're talking about Judaism over here, right? We're not talking about these other religions where one guy comes out. One a little a, a group says we saw it and we know it and we felt it and it was the revelation and the dead rose up and the and the, the, the bread became a fifty a thousand loaves of bread and that's not that's not the Judaism. Those are nice things, you know, raising the dead. Ezekiel raised up twenty thousand people. It says from the dead, so that's all good stuff. And and eventually the God's going to raise up. But that has nothing to do with the future redemption and all this. I mean, in the end, the dead will raise up, but that. The whole point of the future redemption is re feeling the creator, feeling how infinitely close the creator is, feeling that the creator is creating us, that he loves us, love. Of course, the, cre the creator is also infinitely strict. Eh? We're being created. Every single blood vessel has to be exactly in the right place and every single, <coughs> whatever it is, that the, the nerve has to be running properly. If not, then you're in trouble, right? And not, not just us, but all the bugs in the world and all the, the, the birds in the world and the flies. They all have to be all the very exact. So it's true. God is very, very precise. <clears throat> but we don't feel that it's God. When the sea split, it says that everybody felt that it was God. That's why God split the sea, to give them an introduction to godliness. And that's what they received in Mount Sinai when they received the Torah, to know that the Torah are laws from God, eternal unchanging laws from God himself, and God is infinitely close to us. That's when the Torah that was given. So therefore, Kriyas Yam Sufi was a preparation for the giving of the Torah. They could receive afterwards the Torah, like it says, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, another place in the Talmud. Dav, uh, in, in the Talmud, in Pesachim, in page 119. <coughs> uh, um... Well, it, it, they explained over the sentence in Psalms, that was a mimer right before this one in Lakuti Torah. It says that the sea saw and it ran away. The mountains danced. The mountains danced. That's talking about the giving of the Torah. Because the main thing of doing the commandments is that by means of doing the commandments, Mamshichim, you draw down that there will be revealed light of God, of Ein Sof, in this physical world. That's the idea of the commandments. Like it was revealed in the 10th sphere of Atzilut. And it's a good thing that we don't feel this revelation, because if we did, we would have somewhat the experience like they had in Mount Sinai. We would just totally, how do you say, not be able to accept it. It's just too real. Too real. We would leave our bodies. The, 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 the revelation would be like putting a, a 10 billion watts into a one watt bulb, bulb. <clears throat> just do too much. But silus, asher sham iu that to reveal too much of atzilut, 
is there's no limitations over there, Masha, which is not the case the world of Bria, Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. That these are worlds which are separated, and God wants them to be separated. And if God reveals too much light in these worlds, as it's like turning on the lights in the movie theater, the whole thing just goes away. The bodies and the souls and everything is just and it's just uh, enveloped in true reality. And by means of the commandments, which those are the 248 limbs of the king, we draw down revealed light into the world of Atsilut that it should be revealed also in this physical world. Okay, how much is revealed in the physical world? Like I said, we don't have the vessels to accept it, but the fact of the matter, that's what's happening. And therefore, there had to be first splitting of the Yam Suf, splitting of the sea, and then, which we said that was Malchut, which that's breaking the separation between Atsilut and Bria. Then the Jewish people could even go on the dry land in the sea. What does that mean? That by means of this, they were able afterwards to receive the Torah. The Torah is pure godliness revealed in this world. A lot of people think that the, the, the pure godliness, you can only find, you can't find it, but maybe you can get it in heaven. Heaven, that's the goal of life, to go to heaven. Well, I mean, that's not a bad goal. That's pretty good, going to heaven. But the fact is, that that's not true. Pure godliness can only be revealed in this world. That was the whole idea of the Holy Temple. <clears throat> the Holy Temple was the, the that wasn't just a, a you know, stop-off station or something like that, a resting stop for, you know, till, until... Uh, the, the, until the raising of the dead, the the the, the 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 temple. That's the goal that the whole world will be like the holy of holies. But like in the holy of holies was the same revelation that there was on Mount Sinai, and only the high priest could could accept it, and he could only accept it, you know, if he had the proper proper preparation. That's this week's Torah portion. That's this week's Torah portion with none of an view. They went in uninvited into the holy of holies and they died. <clears throat> so the, but God wants that same revelation of the Holy of Holies to be in everywhere in the world, which is not so easy because we're talking about reality over here, reality, and people are very frail. People are very, very frail. Right? You see people that win the, the lottery, they just win a couple million dollars that they just burst, they go crazy, they go berserk, they don't know what to do. Right? They just, they just can't take it. Can't take the revelation. There's sometimes news. A person gets bad news. He gets good news. He has a heart attack. He just can't take it. It's just too too real, too much for him. How much more so we can't get except the feeling of our creator. Huh? Feeling of our creator. There's people, you come into a bank, you take out a gun, and all of a sudden everybody feels their life. I'm alive. I never thought about this. They want to do anything. They're going to do <clears throat> People don't feel their life. They don't know what life is. And when you feel all of a sudden you're threatened, your life is threatened, your life, people freak out. They have no idea what <clears throat> that the idea is, is to feel the goodness of life, but to feel it in a way that's practical. And that's not so easy. That's pure life. That's atzilut. Atzilut is another word for holiness. That's what it means the Jewish people are holy. They reveal, they have the potential to reveal atzilut in this physical world. Atzilut. Atzilut is holiness. That's why the land of Israel is holy. The land. Holy. To reveal pure godliness in this world. That's the, that's the job. And how do you reveal pure godliness in the world? The commandments. The commandments. That's the only way to do it. The, the holy temple was a commandment. <clears throat> so it says, by means of the commandments, as we can draw godliness into the world. But first of all, we, we draw it into the world of Bria, the spiritual worlds, the world of the souls, the world of Yetzirah, the world of the angels and Asiya in this physical world. The whole idea of the Torah is to give the commandments, doing the commandments actually. But Talmud Torah and the commandment of learning Torah is equal to all of them. But then and afterwards we'll receive the reward. What's the reward we're going to get? Going to heaven? Not exactly. That's that's the stopping off point. That's the that's the rest station. Right? That's the break you take going to heaven. The goal is Lati Lavoshu and his Galus revealing the inside of the Torah and the secrets of the commandments. Like the rabbis say, Yeshekenim and Shikaspil, like King Solomon said, right in the beginning of his book, The Song of Songs, that God will kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. God's mouth is the creates the world. 
God's mouth also gave the Torah. God spoke. That's the inside. And the kisses of God's mouth, that's the inside of the Torah. And also the idea of Mashiach. The Mashiach that it says, Hine Yaskil of the consider my servant. Yoram Venisa of Gobo Mo'od. It says that he's very high, elevated, etc. Namely, it says that he's my servant. He's higher than Abraham. He's higher than Yitzchak. Ad, he's higher even than Moshe Rabbeinu. It says that Adam, the Mashiach is going to be even higher than, than Adam, the first man. <coughs> oh, I skipped the line. Ad Avram Yitzchak. Ad until Gobo Mo'od. He's very, very high. Mashiach is going to be very, very, a very high, elevated, true person, it says very much, ma'od are the letters of Adam, Aleph, Dalad, Mem. Man started the whole business, Adam. Mashiach is going to be the culmination. That's what God wanted Adam to be. Sheyelam, Mailam, Vichinus, Adam, Arishan will be higher than the first man. Vichinus, Moshe, Rabin will be higher than even Moses. Kamoshikatuv, like it says in Sefer Gilgulim, in the book, of the Arizal called the Book of Reincarnation. It explains who is a reincarnation of who. All the it says that by the way, that our generation, the generation that Mashiach is supposed to come any second, is the is we're all reincarnations of the generation that left Egypt. <clears throat> anyway, the book the Sefer Gilgulim, it says over there, there says that the first man, Adam Arishon, Achar Shechet, after he sinned. <coughs> There it says that he's after after he sins. This is a question: Will will the Mashiach be higher than the first man? So everyone agrees that he's going to be higher than the first man. But the question is: Is he going to be higher than the first man after the first after Adam sinned or before he sinned? So some places it says it's even before he sinned because Adam the Mashiach will will succeed in the task that Adam was supposed to have done. Adam was created to fix up the world, and that would have elevated the world and Adam. And he didn't do it, so he wasn't elevated. That's one opinion. Another opinion is that Adam was the ultimate highness. He was perfect man. And he was supposed to bring this perfection into the world, but he didn't, so that lowered him. And Mashiach will be higher. He'll reinstate Adam. He'll be an example of Adam before he sinned. Anyway, that doesn't. It's not, we'll, have, we'll see when it happens. It's not that important, especially to me and you, but it's maybe to some people. <clears throat> Nevertheless, suffice it to say that there will be a leader of the Jewish people that will be an example of how close God is to each and every one of us and how God is creating us. Every single one, of every human being, without exception. Okay, so it says, look over there. It tells you different places to look. It says, that's what it means that who Yilameh, that Mashiach will teach that to connect the call Adam, everyone, Bahasagat, Pinimus the Torah, he'll teach everyone the secrets of the inside of the Torah, <clears throat> which that's Chasidut. That's what we're learning now. Chasidut is called Torah to Mashiach. Each person according to the according to his ability, Shiyilma Torah, that he'll learn the revealed Torah to us and our children. That's what Mashiach is going to do. And he'll do it according to each and every person, according to each and every personality. He'll take his time and he'll just, says the Rebbe, does th 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 that make sense? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have in a class, right? If you're a teacher, you have in your class, there's always children that are, they, they don't keep up with the rest of the class. Their mind wanders or they're, they're thinking about other things or they're just, they, they don't understand ideas quickly. They don't understand the, the 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 how do you say verbal they they're more they they're more rather than seeing things that so each and every one so you have to spend time with each and every pupil it says that's what Mashiach is going to do he's going to teach every single Jew according to his way I mean does that make sense that is just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever how can it possibly be ain't no movement it's not understandable how could it be one person to bear so many tens and tens of thousands of people. But with Allah, as then in the raising of the dead, it says even Moses will raise up. Gam kala gadolim, all the great people of all the generations, all the rabbis of the Talmud and all these people that raised the dead. It says, Rabbi, uh, the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> what was the name? Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. 
that he raised up the dead as the story says that the, the all the he was the least of the the Tanaim and he raised up the dead. He said all of them raised up the dead. The Tanaim, by the way, are what they call the Pharisees, right? So you see how the world is is, is uh, sick. And the Pharisees, the, the people who are called the Pharisees, the Perushim, they had the power to raise the dead, these people. And they'll all raise up in, in the raising of the dead. They're all dead, but they're dead. <clears throat> that, that These people already know the whole Torah. What's Mashiach going to teach them? El Inyan is, Ke'az then will be the learning, the inside of the Torah, the secrets of the Torah, the soul of the Torah. Baruch Eretz Mida, which is un, in, uh, in, infinitely deep and infinitely wide. The explanations of the letters of the Torah and the words of the Torah and the combination of the words of the Torah according to godliness. The Yeshbaza Elias Rabbas, there's infinite elevations without any end. <coughs> so the Torah, and listen, if, if in the physical world, we see what's going on in the physical world, right? The physical world, they, they thought in the, the, the beginning there were four elements then all of a sudden they realized no maybe there's atoms then they, they started seeing that there's there's atoms that there's electrons and that there's new, then they started realizing that there's quarks and that there's units of energy and then i don't even you know that's the extent of my <laughs> of my uh, atomic particle knowledge but they're realizing deeper and deeper things about reality what reality is you know science is just increasing so you figure okay after you know uh Einstein, that's it, pretty much finished. Ah, that was just beginning. He just began a whole new world of, of knowledge. And each discovery comes another thousand questions and another thousand. So you see that the physical world is deep and complicated and wondrous and amazing and, and, and fantastic, right? The, 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 the physical world. <clears throat> and that's only the physical world. That, but what about the spiritual worlds? The spiritual worlds are infinite. What about godly worlds? God is creating the world. So there's the physical, there's the spiritual, then there's the godly. And Kabbalah deals with the spiritual, but also the godly. And there's no end to it if there's in the physical world. But the problem is we're just not awake. We're not aware at all that there is such a thing as what the spiritual worlds are. <clears throat> but behold, in order to do the receiving of the Torah, that be a sutta to do them, there has to be first splitting of the Yam Suf. Kach, in order that there, in order there had to be splitting of the sea, right? Wow. Also, in order that there should be the Panemius Torah, the inside of the Torah. In the future, there has to be also the splitting of the river. And what is this river that's going to be split? So again, the Jews got out of Egypt, but and the purpose was to receive the Torah so that they would be able to do the commandments. What was the main? But what was the preparation to receive the Torah? So one of the main preparations was that God had to split the sea. Splitting the sea means we had to open up this malchut of etzilut so that people would have a little bit of a feeling where this Torah is coming from. It's not coming from Moses, and it's not coming from a person or a spirit or an angel. It's coming from the <clears throat> the essence of the Creator Himself, ultimate, ultimate reality, the Creator of reality. That's where the Torah is coming from. And so in order to even understand that there is such a thing, so God split the sea so that the Jewish people would have a little bit of a glimpse of this. <clears throat> but that was a preparation of to receive the revealed Torah. But to receive this inner Torah, the inner secrets of the Torah, which that's what Mashiach is going to teach everybody, is in order to do that, Kedelios Kabbalah Torah Biyoton, I'm sorry, but in order to receive the inside penimis the Torah in the future, there has to be a hainif yado al anar. That's what Isaiah is talking about, that God lifts his hand on the river. What is the river? The river is the river Prat. Huh? It says that four rivers came out of Eden. Like it says, anar ravi, and the fourth river is the river Prat. And the rabbis say, <clears throat> Prat is per, uh, in the <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> in the last chapter of the Talmud in Bechorot, it says that this is me, the who This comes from the the source. <clears throat> this is the river that comes from Aden. So Aden is usually Chachma, and the river that comes out of it that's what's called Bina. So when God split the sea, He split Malchut. That's the lowest level. 
of uh, of of godliness, and he, that's the lowest level of godliness that separates between Atzilut and Bria. That's what happened when he split the sea. So God revealed the essence of Atzilut in the spiritual world. <clears throat> So the lowest part of Atzilut was revealed in the world of Bria. And the, the repercussions of that came down into this world that the Jewish people felt something was going on. They felt godliness. They felt that was a preparation for the giving of the revealed Torah. But as a preparation for the inside of the Torah, which Mashiach is going to teach everybody, which is it's the same Torah and the same commandments, but it'll teach us a new a, a new living meaning godliness that's present in every letter of the Torah, every <clears throat> every commandment that's incomprehensible now. <clears throat> and this is the level of, he's not going to just split Malchut, he's going to split Bina. That's the river, river that goes from Aden. Aden is Chachma, comes from Bina. Shehu, Bechinat, Machshava, this is the level of God's thought from above, which is above God's speech. When the sea was split, so that split God's speech. We opened up to see who's speaking. But when the, the river will be split, then that's kind of going to split God's thought. We're going to see who's planning this world, the plan of the world. The plan of the world, that's the Kabbalah. That's the, the secrets of the Torah. Therefore, it's called a Nahar. Therefore, it's called a river. The thought is like, ain't no nothing, like a river. It's like a, just like thought. A person's thought is like a river. It never rests. It never it never stops or rests. Thought goes on all the time. And so we're talking about just like we have our speech, God has his speech. He created the world from his speech. And God's thought, it says the Jewish people in the Torah rose up in God's thought. So just as God's speech covers over the fact that there's a speaker, so God's thought covers over the fact that there's a thinker, right? The Jewish people rose up in God's thought. You feel this, you know it. Right, yeah, some people they go crazy and say the Jewish people are were chosen. God chose us. Say, what are you talking about? That's don't even say that. Ah, right. That's the source of all the bigotry. That's why people hate us. But that's the fact. The fact is, it's true, and it's good when people feel that. Then it's it's good. People will feel that there's a creator, and creator loves everybody, and he chose the Jews to tell everybody this. But we have to have an inner connection with God, and that's the secrets of the Torah. And what's preventing us from feeling the secrets of the Torah to feel that is what's called God's thought. And that's what's going to split my the Mashiach in the days before Mashiach comes. Okay, and therefore it's called Nahar. It's called a river that it's drawn. We said that before. It's drawn constantly. It's a sentence that in the future, it's a sentence in Isaiah, that in the future all of the, the nations will run to the Mashiach and he will teach them that all of their religions are lies. So Sheker Nachalu Avoteim, that all the religions, the founders of their religions, didn't know what they were talking about. So basically, the non-Jews are all innocent. All the religions are mistakes, but they're they were that's what they were taught. And who taught them? People that didn't know themselves. It says that all of the, <clears throat> the nations will run flock to the Mashiach. That's what it means. Then that's a, the, they will run like a river runs, which is not the case to see. The sea is it's it's stable. <clears throat> it's mikvah mayim. It's a gathering of water. The kavu kaimu. That where it is, that's where it stays. This is God's speech. <clears throat> Therefore, the world always remains pretty much the same. The world is the same. It's not <clears throat> true. It's dynamic within itself. It's moving, and there's there's movement. But the world is is it's it's the same. Covering over of godliness. And regarding to, to God, the world is always the same. The world screams out that there is no God. Right? Science seems to have proved that there is no God. <clears throat> right? You want to tell me that every bug is being created by God with its nervous system and everything? Every bug is created by its previous bug, by its parents. It's just laws of nature, that's all. Right? That's more logical than to say that God creates every amoeba and he creates everything constantly. It makes no sense. And it's totally irrational to say anything like that, even though it's the truth. That's God's deep work, covers over. The, the, the physical creation, that's all we see. It's that the, sea, the physical creation is like a sea. 
It's like a, like an ocean. It just stays there. Stays there the same thing. We don't see that anything is concealed. It's not like an ocean, a sea. You know there's octopuses down there and squids and all sorts of weird stuff. You don't see anything. The same thing is that the, the world covers over godliness. It seems to be the same. The river, <clears throat> this is hinting at already moving. Godliness moving. When that splits, we'll see that there's something even deeper than that. That's the river that came out from Aden, right in the beginning of the creation. Look in the Bible. Chiyotza that goes out and it was drawn constantly from Aden, constantly, the river. That's God's thought. This is also letters, but this is <clears throat> only garments of the essence of wisdom. Kamo Dibor, just like speech. Speech conceals more a person's, let's say, emotions, what he wants to say. And thought, this is this is a garment <clears throat> for your awareness, intellect. But 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 thought is a garment, an inner garment. It's an inner garment of the soul. Speech is an outer garment of oh, but mm -mm, maybe we're gonna have to do this tomorrow. Nevertheless, it is also a garment which conceals, and it conceals all, all over God's essence, and that's what Mashiach is going to split. He's going to split God's thought. Let's see where, what's, that here? what's going on over here. we got to move this. Take this. Oh. Why doesn't this move? Huh? Oh. One minute. Therefore, it says, the rabbis say that Aden, this level of Aden from the river, that river comes out of Aden, it says, I and Lora Atta, that I can never, has never seen, no one has ever, even the vaguest idea of what this level of Chachma is, that's going to be the raising of the dead. Maybe you can say, this is the river, this is the garden, the garden of Aden. This is Aden that says, no, there's a river that came out from Aden, and it watered the garden. Namely, that there's three levels. There's Aden, that's usually Chachma. Then there's the river, that's Bina. And then there's the garden. <clears throat> the garden, that's everything which is below it. Hainu, Mishum, because She'en Ham Shacha in Gan Eden, only by means of these letters which are called Nar. Now Gan Eden, that's like heaven. And it receives from this level which is called the river. The river are God's, the letters of God's thought. That these letters, they conceal. And the revelation is just a little bit of a, a ray of what's going on, right? So there's the person that's speaking, and, and the speech conceals over the, it reveals the person, but it's also concealing over the essence of the person. You can record a person's speech. And therefore, you can you can hear a person's voice, and the person is dead. He's dead 100 years. You can hear his voice. So a voice really conceals over who the person is. <clears throat> there's no real exam, not co no comparison between the words of a person and the person himself. The same thing is with thought, but thought reveals a more deep aspect, but thought also conceals. The same thing is with God. It says, by means of the future, and so this thought of God, that's the inside of the word of God, that's the inside of the Torah, also even the, in, the, the, the inner word of God, the Torah, the thought is the inside of that, that's this river that came out from Aden. Aden is a level of pure godliness, that that's going to be the secret of the raising of the dead. Says, but and what's separating us from seeing this and feeling this level of Aden? The river, and God is going to split this river in the future by means of Hanif Yodo that he'll, God will raise up His hand on the river. Then there will come revelation of this level of Aden, and that's what it means that in the future it says God said, just like the days of going out of Egypt, Erenu Niflaot. This is from Micha prophecy. I will show you miracles. God says, I will show you. Rhea, everyone will see. Godliness, seeing means to be certain, above hearing, shmia, bahavana, and understanding. But those are just <clears throat> letters alone. Therefore, in the future, we're going to see and feel godliness. The Indian real, this idea of seeing, this is chachma atzma, this is the highest level of the 10 aspects of godliness. <clears throat> like we said before, remember we learned this before, that the Ariza, <coughs> he went to sleep, Bishat Shina, he went to sleep on a Shabbat for a half an hour, and it said that he, they saw that he was speaking and talking, moving around. They asked him what he heard. He said, I heard in the Yeshiva Shalmaila, in the upper heavens, in Parshas Balak, it says, things so amazing that it would take me 80 years to, to explain to you what I saw. 
says the Rebbe, this is a big, this is very surprising. How can a person grasp in his thought of one hour or half an hour that you'll have to speak 80 years in order to explain it? That the law, because the laws of the the the, the letters of thought, <clears throat> they're called big letters in the Torah. There's small letters in print, small letters, and there's big letters, and there's middle sized letters. Almost all the Torah is the middle sized letters, <clears throat> but there's also big letters, and that's talking about the the letters of God's thought. That's the that's the letters of the Torah, <clears throat> the inside of the Torah, because the thought can grasp a little bit and a little bit of time what it would take in speech a long time to say. Like inspiration. Uh, a person gets in, oh, I got an inspiration. Nevertheless, a person can grasp in his mind that here it says a quarter of an hour. That what it has to speak. Sometimes you can grasp in a quarter of an hour something, an idea that you, it'll take you an hour or two to explain. But that a person can grasp in one hour 60, it says, some places it says 60 years. 60 or 80 years, that's impossible. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So how can it be that the Arizal saw in one hour what it would take him 80 years to say? He wasn't exaggerating. But it's like this. It means that the grasping, the mind of the Arizal, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, right? He lived about 450 years ago in Spat. <clears throat> this He saw things. The <clears throat> not how it's understandable or graspable in any sort of letters. He went above thought. He saw something that was real. That a person can he, that he sees just in one hour, it, the, the, that he would take him to put into letters, and it would take him 80 years. Because letters conceal over and the thing that we're talking about, which is above time, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I'm like, for instance, there's prophets. Sometimes prophets, like Moses, for instance. In the Torah, Moses says things that are going to happen in another 3,000 years. How can he know what's going to happen in 3,000 years? It takes a long time for things to evolve. It says, because in the upper worlds, a little bit of time is like a seed for a lot of time down here. <clears throat> El of Shana says, well, like, is this one, one, a, a thousand years are in your eyes like one day, says God. Same thing as Moses wanted to see the land of Israel. What does it mean that Moses, it says, by Yarashid Lo, Moshe wanted to draw down this level where he was at, that in one second, one moment, you could see a thousand years. He wanted to draw this down in every Jew. And he wanted to, that's the, that's what he meant. He wanted to see the land. The Jewish people are called the, the desirous land. But he didn't succeed in this. It just, it just said, now Israel, listen, etc. So the Jewish people, Moses drew down into the Jewish people a certain distant awareness of the oneness of God, not like his. So the Jewish people knew that there was something eternal inside of them that Moses gave to them, but they don't know what it is. They don't feel it. They don't feel godliness. This is the revelation that's going to be in the, the reasons for the commandments in the future, the secrets of the Torah and the reasons of the commandments. Therefore, it says, I mean, if you just think about it one moment, if you put on tefillin, right, a Jew, let's say, take an example, puts on tefillin, and that's a godly thing. And we see totally non-religious Jews are willing to do it. They're willing to do it. I go every day and put the fill in on people. I'm just amazed. Totally non-religious people, they put on the fill and say, I don't want to put on. All right, I'll do it. I don't know how. I never did. Never did. Never did it before. They're willing to put on. Why, why are they willing to do it? Why? They're not religious. They say they're not religious because they feel something eternal, something true, something real. They're not thinking about going to heaven. They don't care about heaven or hell. It makes no difference to them whatsoever. They just feel in that moment, there's something true there. What, what is this truth? That's the commandments. The commandments are pure godliness. How can you put pure godliness into a little box that a normal person puts it on? We're not talking about people, put these on, you're going to go to heaven. Put these on, you're going to be well. If you don't put them on, you're going to you know, step on a crack, you break your mother's back. We're not talking about that at all. He's not doing anything for himself. Suddenly, the person feels something real. 
He gives his total being. It doesn't care what people think about him. It takes time. It takes two, three minutes to put on the bill in the middle. And it's a big, big religious thing. And these people are not religious. They're anti-religious. What are they doing it for? Right? Why are they doing it? Because they feel the truth. How can you put truth into a box? Into a little box that a person puts it on his arm. Right? And these are not superstitious people. They go around and they have a horseshoe over their door or with a four-leaf clover in their wallet or something like that. And they're not thinking in those terms at all. They're just interested in the truth. And the truth is something which is so far away from us. The Torah is the ultimate truth. You know how many books there are in the library? The Torah is the only one that's true. Does that make sense? How is that? How could that be? The land of Israel is holy. There's so many lands in the uh, Israel is holy. That makes sense. Oh, land is holy. And because we don't see, we don't feel what holy means. And it says, Mashiach will come and he'll show us what the truth is. <coughs> Therefore, it says, and the, especially the raising of the dead, that's going to be pure truth revealed. Therefore, it says, no eye can see it. That's the level of, 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 the, uh, of Aden. And the river separates us from seeing this. That's the river that Mashiach is going to, before Mashiach comes, will open up. Yasel and Machakebo will be done for those who wait for him. This is what Mashiach will teach everyone. Mashiach will split the sea, and that's what we're learning now. That's actually what, this is what this is. These are the secrets of the Torah that Mashiach is teaching us. The leader of the, of the Jews, every generation, is the Lubavitcher Rebbe of that generation. Before that, there was others. There were, Baal Zen, this, it says, Hine, Yaskil Avdi, this says, behold, my, 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 my servant, Sheyesh Brechin Azu, Elios Le'enkates, higher and higher and higher levels above Adam, or the same level of Adam, but revelations, pure feeling of the truth, of godliness. And that's what's going to happen, that the sea will split, and we'll all be aware of the Creator, and how close and good and infinitely loving the Creator is to each one of us. Now we'll do the, we have a speech. Last week we, we finished the speech, the, the Rebbe, so we're going to start a new one today. Here we go. And last night. Here we go, one minute. One minute.